Hi, Dr. Reen. Nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you as well. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for taking your time. I know it's the weekend and everybody's doing something, but um, um, the main focus of today's um, webinar, honestly, is basically to get to know us. So we really want our participants, our members, people within the GCC or anywhere around the globe to get to know Tesla Kuwait to get to know what are the things that we offer, um, to get to know some of our upcoming events, what are we planning, what are we cooking for you. And then what we have um, today as well are some of our members um, who will be joining us today live as well um, to talk about our different positions. So each chair will talk about what we will be offering, how we can help you, how you can help us as well. and. Um, Certificates will be um, provided at the very end. And at the very end, we're basically going to have a little educational section um, as to how we can make education or teaching a better and learning practice for our students and for us as well. So for those who know me, hello. For those who do not know me, my name is Dr. Rima Panay, and I'm an assistant professor at Kuwait Technical College. I am also the president-elect of TESOL Kuwait for this year, and I was the conference chair last year, and I, I'm recognizing some of the names here today, and I've noticed that a lot of you did join our conference that was sponsored by Cambridge University Press and Assessment. So thank you all for being here. So um, let's just briefly go through the uh, main points of our discussion for today. So TESOL Kuwait's vision and mission are going to be discussed. So we're going to talk about what it is that we see for us today and for the future, how we want to help educators around the world. Um, what are the things that we will provide you in terms of our services? So I'm going to mention all of the services that we will be providing you this year, um, our promise to you. Um, our annual conference will also be discussed. So um, I think most of you already know this, but um, we have a conference that's annual every single year. And we usually hold these conferences in February. So these will be discussed as well um, with our uh, hopefully conference chair or our president for today. We'll also be discussing volunteering with TESOL Kuwait. So how you can volunteer, how you can be part of TESOL Kuwait, which is something that's very important to us. Um, so we'll talk about TESOL Kuwait's membership. So that is also another window to be looked into. And of course, we'll end the session with a very beneficial lecture on teaching techniques. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to have them in the chat box or maybe have um, basically wait until the very end of the session and we can have a Q&A session where um, uh, you guys can um, make sure to open your mics and discuss whatever it is that you might like or inquire um, about anything that you would like. So that's what we will be uh, doing briefly for today. Um, so let's start off with talking about our mission. Let's talk about our vision. So just for those who don't know, um, TESOL Kuwait is affiliated with TESOL International Association. So the idea of TESOL Kuwait was born in 2016, where a couple of our members that are still here today um, thought of better ways to help educators within Kuwait, um, within the educational arena. And think of ways on how to share our experiences, our knowledge, research as well. So, just so you all know, um, teachers of English, of speakers of other languages, TESOL's original name was actually founded in 1966. And we are still affiliated with TESOL International. And um, it's something that we take a lot of pride in. It's something that we take very seriously. A lot of our speakers in our annual conference are from TESOL International as well. So we do bring in um, TESOL International speakers to give our members a lot of information on uh, new techniques, um, on their different countries and how different countries have dealt with, for instance, the pandemic and whatnot. So this is something that we still do um, today. As for our mission and vision, so of course you can find all of these details on our website, we, which we will be sharing with you. But we are considered to be a professional organization. We're a nonprofit organization. 
So this is why we truly look for a lot of volunteers. We truly look for a lot of people who are devoted to education, to teaching, to learning, to research, and just be part of our community. So for anyone who's basically involved in teaching non-native speakers of English, so this is something that we do take very seriously and we do hope that we do end up um, involving a lot of the educators within our area. And we're devoted to professional development to our members. So we do this in several ways. So I think all of you are here. So this is one of the examples. We usually hold monthly webinars where we can basically provide whatever we can to our members. So those interested in actually being part of this can always join. Feel free to email us. The email list is also on our website, which I will be sharing with you, where you can basically email us, reach out to us if you would like to participate. Um, especially in our mini conference that we will be talking about and our main conference, which will be held in February, which we will be talking about in more details. So TESOL Kuwait is an official affiliate of TESOL International, and we hope that we're advancing the quality of English language teaching through professional development, through research, through different standards and advocacy. So this is something that we really are passionate about. And we hope that this is what we are providing you with. So let me just go through the details of everything that we've uh, provided previously and that we will be providing this um, annual year. So the very first thing that we will be doing is our annual conference, which will be held in February. So we've already actually started, um, so we've started the skeleton of all of that. And uh, we have our main sponsor. We have our um, preliminary speakers. Um, our keynote speakers are there. However, the chance is still not done. You can still definitely apply. We also have paper proceedings. And this is what we've done for our previous um, uh, conference. So Kuwait Technical College uh, actually sponsored the proceedings for the conference. And anytime you would like, you can just simply email me. The booklet is in printing. And the proceedings are all there with all the speaker's details, all the papers, the bios, and everything that you would like. So that's something that we were very lucky to get from Kuwait Technical College. So in the future, in our annual conferences, we will be providing um, paper proceedings to those who do apply to our conferences. Another thing that we do offer our members is the monthly webinars. So the monthly webinars are really important as well, because what we try to do is we listen to our members. So we do this through our social platforms, through the emails that we get, through personal contact from any member, and we try to cater to your needs. So what is it that you want to hear from us? What is it that you would like to learn about? Um, feel free to contact us through our social media. Feel free to contact us via email. Feel free to let us know at the end of the session if there are any specific topics um, that you would like to and you would like us to emphasize on, and we can definitely uh, squeeze in some space and squeeze in or maybe gather a couple of experts here and there to talk about the topics that you are very interested in. So these monthly webinars are usually online um, because what we're trying to do is widen our platform. So we don't want to just be restricted to Kuwait. And what we want to do is be um, able to cater to educators around the world. So I think that's where, or that's where our target is going. Even for our annual conference, what we will be trying to do is um, having a hybrid conference where we can allow members that are not in Kuwait to also join, to also benefit um, from the different lectures that will be um, spoken during the conference as well. Something else that I am um, very excited about is kids' educational activities. So um, this year, um, we thought it would be very interesting to also look at children and maybe provide them with a live session of different education, a different educational activities. So that's something that we will be announcing on our social media platforms. Um, so please do make sure that you do follow us on our social media platforms in order to be able um, to know about all of this. Um, something very interesting as well is our mini conference that we will be holding very soon. So pretty soon uh, we will be announcing again on our social media platforms, our mini conference details. 
So um, the mini conference that we will be holding is called Innovation Trends in Language Learning. And it basically talks about teacher education during the pandemic post the pandemic as well. So it aims to enhance teachers, different teaching methods and pr promote cooperation um, and professional development between different institutions. So the mini conference will definitely be announced on our social media platforms as well. Um, so, so far the target for our mini conference will be November. So if anyone is interested, um, please do email us. It will be an in-face uh, conference where you can come in, you can give your lecture, or you can come in and listen to other lectures. So that's something that we really look forward to as well. And we promise to share all the details with you really soon. And something else that we provide all our um, members and all the attendees is certificates. Um, so certificates are really important to us because we know that professional development is important to you. So uh, we try to be, uh, you know, as, as creative as we can with our certificates and we do provide our members with certificates. So for today's lecture, we will be providing certificates at the very end. Um, so please make sure that you are there because we will only be um, giving you a link to download your certificate during the session of today's lecture. Um, so please make sure that you are there for that. So um, let's go into details. Let's go into details of our annual conference. So our annual conference um, chair is Ms. Rawan Kindiri. And um, Ms. Rawan is basically in charge of organizing the conference um, that we will be having in February. But I would like to invite Ms. Anne with us today. Ms. Anne, are you here? Yes, I am. So Ms. Anne will be giving you some more details about our annual conference. So um, Ms. Anne, the floor is all yours. If you okay. could kindly provide us with the details. Okay, oh, if you would stop so sharing, good. I'm going to share, okay? Sure. I hope, there, there it is. I hope that's the right one. Okay. And if you would also admit people, Ms. Ring or Dr. Ring. Okay, can everyone see my screen here? Okay, yes. uh, and for the conference, what you will do is you come to TESOL Kuwait, it's just uh, HTTPS colon backslash backslash TESOLKuwait.net, okay? And uh, you will come to our home page For the conference, Look under 2023 and look at call for proposals. Okay, here is for our 2023 hybrid conference. And you will notice that we have a theme for it. Okay, you have different ones that you can use because we're we're talking about, about education here. And um, we have very simple to do. If you would look over this and then you will see what we have, our themes that you can choose for and you can see what we will be doing. Now, when is it? It is the 17th and 18th of February. So please save the date. Where's it going to be? <clears throat> well, uh, KTEC, Kuwait Technical College, has been kind enough to um, host it for us. We're looking uh, forward to it. This will be the first time that we will hold our conference there. Uh, the sponsor, you notice, is Cambridge. And they have um, are providing us with five speakers. And then we have uh, Sandra Story is also coming. She is the edu educational liaison uh, from the US Embassy. And then back by demand, uh, Christopher Graham. He's always very, very popular. Now, this is a hybrid conference. So you can join us face to face or you will be able to log in virtually. 
and we will have links like what we did last time so that you can just click on it and join the sessions. Okay, and that will be up later, more information about the timing and what you have to choose from. Now, for those people who are actually able to join us face-to-face, they're going to be door prizes. Yes, every hour or so, we will be giving away a door prize. And uh, you will also find book vendors there. So we really hope that you will come. We strongly urge you to submit your proposal. We already have some, we have some excellent proposals. Uh, they are from, uh, I think the Ukraine. Uh, we have, I'm not sure from Ecuador, it might be Honduras. And then of course we have from India, we have uh, from Kuwait. So there are going to be a lot of presenters and very good ones, but we need your proposals if you want to be a part of presenting. And all you would have to do is click right there on that page. Remember, it is um, Kiesel Kuwait, and then you go in and you look. And I'm going to stop sharing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the chat, I hope. Okay. I'm trying to go to the chat room, chat there. Here is, I've just put up the page that you can go to. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, if there aren't any questions, Dr. Reem, I turn it back over to you. All right, thank you very much, Ms. M. All right, so this is something that we usually do. So our annual conference is very important to us. And again, we do promise that there will be proceedings for any paper that's going to be submitted. And uh, hopefully we will be able to see everyone face to face. And for those who are not in the country, definitely hybrid. So we will be providing you with the schedule and it'll have the uh, Zoom links uh, available to you. Um, and uh, we definitely look forward to your participation and your attendance. Now, something else that we um, mentioned earlier is volunteering. So please do volunteer with us. And with us today is Ms. Fatma Hussain, and she is our volunteer chair at TASOL Kuwait. So Ms. Fatma. Hello. Hi there. So the floor Hi. is all yours. All right, thank you. So hello everyone, my name is uh, Fatma Hussain and I work at uh, GUST in Kuwait. I'm the volunteers chair, so I'm responsible for the volunteers who are gonna help us on the days of the conferences, whether it was in Nova, uh, it's gonna be in November or February, the big one. So uh, yeah, so we need help with stuff like organizing the event that day and like just greeting the guests and stuff like that. So if you are interested, it's a great opportunity. If you are interested in becoming a volunteer for Tessel Kuwait, uh, please fill in this form. I will share, share the link. One second. So yeah, just please uh, fill the form and I will be contacting you soon. And if you have any other questions, uh, you can email me. Uh, my email is on tasalkuwait.com, the, uh, the website, and I'll just share it now. Yeah. So if you have any questions about volunteering, it's a great opportunity and it will look also great on your CV. But if you have any questions, please you can ask in the chat. If not, I'll turn this over back to Dr. Reem. All right, thank you, Ms. Fatma. So um, we truly live on um, basically volunteer work, community work. Um, so that's what um, basically most of our members are doing. So because it is a nonprofit organization, all of our members are taking up time, their very own personal time to, um, to be there with us during our meetings, to help organize, 
uh, to help with different aspects of our conference, our main conference, as well as our mini conference that we will be holding very soon. So if this is something that you would like to participate in, kindly feel free to contact Ms. Fatma and also do fill out the Google Forms sheet that's been attached in the chat box where basically you can provide us with your personal information and we will be able to contact you um, very soon. Um, and no, there is no fee to registering in any of our conferences or webinars. So um, it is all free um, to our um, members. So uh, no worries at all. I hope that answers your question. So moving on. All right. So um, we will be talking about membership. Um, and uh, our membership chair is actually not here with us today, but Miss Anne, our president, will be talking about membership. So Miss Anne, would you kindly um, fill us in regarding membership? Okay, if you will stop sharing, then I will share. Certainly. Okay, we're back here again to the um, page the T-Cell Kuwait page, and go to home, right under here, the drop down, join, become a member. And notice you want the free membership, okay? And then you would click on that, then you would click on new, next, and you would fill in, just follow the steps there, and that's all it takes to be to become a member. And remember, you can be a member if you're in India, if you're uh, in Honduras, wherever. You are most welcome. But we especially invite our Kuwaiti colleagues to join. Okay. Uh, and as Dr. Reem had said, everything is free. We do this from the, based on the generosity of our sponsors, for instance, like Tahada Salaso. So if you or your company would care to be a sponsor, please contact me. I can be contacted very easily. Just president at tsalkuwait.net. Okay. Uh, so you are invited to become a member if you aren't already. Okay, Dr. Reem. All right, thank you very much. All right, so as we promised, um, uh, the certificate links will be in the attendance, sorry, the uh, certificates of attendance will be in the chat box shortly. But what we have for you today is a small section of an educational lecture that we would like to share with you on how to advance our teaching, um, how to get our students listening better, and how to provide our students with a better learning experience. So the lecture has been already pre-recorded for you. So Ms. Anne will be sharing it with us today. So please stay seated and anticipate what's coming. All right, so Ms. Anne, you can go ahead and yes. show us your recording. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to this webinar. This is on uh, creating many lessons for reading to help your students. If you want to create super people, then you will teach your students how to use context clues. And you can do this in just uh, 15 minutes. Now you could break it up into several sessions where that you would hone in on particular context clues, or like what I'm doing today, I'm using five of them. Now, there is a method to this. There are four steps that you're going to use, and it's going to take you about 15 minutes. First, you're going to introduce what you are, the skill that you're using. Then you're going to instruct, and this part, 10 minutes, it's broken up into two five-minute segments. 
Then in five minutes, you're going to interact with your students where they're going to interact with you. And finally, close. Let's look at that in more detail. As I said in the first one, it is introduced. You actually take a minute to introduce the skill. You do not uh, stop and say to the students, uh, any questions or do, do you have that? No, you just introduce the skill. Then when you go to instruct, remember it has two parts. The first part of five minutes is where you're going to explain the basic skills and you're going to have an anchor chart that you will use. In an additional five minutes, you're going to model the physical steps while you think aloud so that they can see how your thought process and hopefully in the third step where that you're interacting you're again going to be thinking aloud, but you're asking them to think aloud and to help you with the context clues. The final step, close, is where you have assigned a, a reading and the students are going to practice or apply the skills that you have just used. And steps one, and two, students do not ask questions. They simply observe. It is in step three that you all interact and step four where they are on their own employing the skills that you have taught them. Okay, let's talk about introducing the skill. We're going to identify the skill, then we're going to define it and then we're going to let the students know the purpose of it. I think that we all do better when we actually know why we're doing something. So here I am, remember I'm using context clues. I would say to the students, the skill that we're going to be working with today is context clues. What do I mean by context clues? Well, context clues are the clues or hints that are in paragraphs or sentences, reading passages that help you, the reader, to understand the meaning of a new or unfamiliar word. Why do we want to learn this? Well, guess what? A dictionary isn't always going to be available, so you need to know, what does this word mean? Are there any clues so I can figure it out? And then another reason is sometimes words have more than one meaning. So we want to figure out from the context in which this word is used, what is its meaning? Okay, this is the say what stage. And we're going to look at five types of context clues today. Now there are nine or 10 different ones uh, types that you have, but today we're just going to look at uh, the five, five that are most commonly used. A definition, and I think everybody knows what a definition is, it's just, what is the meaning of this word? And sometimes you'll find where it is stated right there. For instance, look at the first example. An American goldfinch is a small yellow bird. Okay, we know what American goldfinch is. Or look at the next example of a definition. Here we have an appositive. The American goldfinch, a small yellow bird, is common in California. A second contextual clue is a synonym. And I think we all remember synonyms. Those are our favorite ones when we're 
uh, actually paraphrasing sometimes we'll go and we will try to find synonyms for words. They're words that have the same meaning in the text. Here's an example, a school or group of fish moves in a harmonious pattern through the water. You might not have known what a school meant. It's like a school of fish. Well, here it showed us it's got or. Oftentimes they will use or. Antonym, words that have the opposite meaning. And we'll have clues for those where it'll say but or however instead. On the other hand, here, I thought a tomato was a vegetable, but it turns out to be a fruit. Okay, so a tomato is what? It's a fruit. The fourth type, the example. Oftentimes, you'll have it introduced with phrase such as, for example, or including, or such as. And here's our example of the example. To use less salt in cooking, try fresh herbs such as basil, oregano, and rosemary. And sure enough, we had that uh, phrase, such as, to clue us. Then we have general contextual clues. It's just like non-specific clues are spread over several sentences in a text. And this one is giving us a clue of what the game of lacrosse is. It says lacrosse is becoming more popular. You might go, what is lacrosse? Okay, here, players have to be able to run up and down the field, they also have to use a stick with a little net to throw the ball and make goals. We painted a word picture here so that you can see what uh, lacrosse is. Now, to summarize, we're going to be looking for five types of clues today. Definition, synonym, antonym, example, and a general one. Here is our first reading. Let's see if we can figure out from the, this is from uh, the story, The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen. And let's say that we are new to this story and we're reading it. Here we go. The poor duckling had crept out of his shell last of all. He looked so ugly. He was bitten and pushed and made fun of, not only by the ducks, but all the poultry. Hmm, poultry? What's that mean? Well, I look. I look there before it. I see a duck. Not only, but okay. So a duck must be a kind of poultry, okay. He is too big, they all said. The turkey who fancied, okay, the turkey, hmm. The turkey's making fun of him. Turkey must be poultry. Well, I've got a duck and I've got a turkey. I want, maybe a duck is a kind of a bird. A turkey's a kind of a bird. So maybe poultry means birds, okay? And it sounds like birds that we eat, okay? He is too big, they all said. The turkey who fancied himself really an emperor puffed himself out like a vessel in full sail. I wonder what fancied means. Who fancied himself really an emperor. Hmm, I bet that means thinks himself really an emperor, he believes that he is, but I can tell that it means he's mistakenly believing that he is something, okay? A vessel, where is my clue? Ah, sail, it must be a ship. So I could read this as 
the turkey who believed himself really an emperor puffed himself out like a ship in full sail. Yes, that makes sense. He flew at the duckling and became quite red in the face with passion. Mm -hmm. If he flew at him and he, his face is red, I want a passion. He's got a red face. I bet he is angry. So he flew at the duckling and became quite red in the face with anger. The poor little duckling did not know where to go. He was quite miserable because he was so ugly and laughed at by the whole farmyard. Well, I can figure out if he's, he doesn't know what to do and he thinks that he's ugly and everybody's laughing at him. So if he's miserable, he's probably extremely unhappy. The poor duckling was driven about by everyone. Even his brothers and sisters were unkind to him. Hmm, what could unkind be? Hmm, how were they treating him? They're treating him mean. So they were mean to him. They would say, ah, oh, you ugly creature. I wish the cat would get you. Hmm. I think I have a clue. A cat. What is a cat? A cat is an animal. Okay. The ducks pecked him. The chickens beat him. And the girl who fed the poultry picked him with her feet. So at last, he ran away frightening the little birds in the hedge as he flew off. Frightening them, what could that be? Mm. Or do you think they're happy? Probably not, because he left in such a hurry. Maybe it just made them jump, sort of. He's probably scared them. So as you have seen, we have used clues in the reading to figure out what it means. Now, let's work together, you and I, and let's figure out what these words mean. We're going to find acoustics, vibration, molecules, high-pitched, low note, volume, energy, okay? Here we go. The world around us is filled with sound. There are loud sounds and soft sounds. There are pleasant sounds and unpleasant sounds. At this very moment, you are surrounded by sound. Where does sound come from? How does it get to your ears? Why are there different kinds of sound? The study of these questions about sound is called acoustics. Hmm. Who can tell me what kind of clue is this? Yes, it's a definition because notice it says the study of these questions is, okay, acoustics, okay. What are my questions? Well, where does sound come from? <laughs> How does it get from to your ear? Different kinds of sound. Let's go to our next paragraph. Imagine a cymbal hit with a drumstick. The cymbal shakes rapidly, and this vibration causes the tiny particles in the ear around it to vibrate. Hmm. What could vibration mean? Oh, look. Look at this clause before this vibration. The symbol shakes rapidly. So it means that it a shaking rapidly is when we vibrate. These vibrating air particles called molecules. Here, what have we done? We have defined it called molecules bump and, and uh, it's almost like a synonym 
bump into the air particle next to them and make them vibrate. This spreading vibration move moves outward in every direction from the symbol in waves. When a small object is made to vibrate, the sound waves move up and down very quickly. This produces a high pitch sound, like a high note in a song. When a large object is made to vibrate, the sound waves move up and down more slowly. This produces a low pitch sound like a low note in a song. Hitting a small symbol makes a more high pitch sound than hitting a large symbol. Let's go back and let's look at high pitched. I have an example, don't I? It says like a high note in a song. Ah! Okay, there, I think that was more of a, more like a shriek than, uh, than actually a song, but that's the best. You see why I'm a teacher and not a singer. Okay, so high pitched, that would mean a high note in a song. And then low note, hmm, look back before it, low pitched sound. The volume of a sound depends upon the amount of energy or force applied to the object that is caused to vibrate. If the cymbal is hot, hit very hard with the drumstick, the volume of the sound is louder than if it is hit lightly. Okay, what could it be? Hmm. Volume. Volume is how loud something is, right? Yes, because we have, uh, it's louder. What is energy? Who can tell me what energy is? Read the sentence. The sound wave created by a hard hit carries the energy of the hit along with it. Hmm. What would that be? A hard hit. It carries it along. It's when a sound wave hits an object, the force that the sound waves carries causes movement in the object it hits. What did it just say? It gave me the clue here. What was the clue? The force that the sound makes. Okay, so it is force. An extremely loud sound wave, such as the sound of thunder, can actually make the ground shake. Now, this was interaction, and you would have actually been uh, speaking with your students, they would have replied to you. Let's review the steps in a mini lesson. The introduction is one minute. The instruction, think what and say how, are 10 minutes, five minutes each. During steps one and two, the students simply observe. They listen and observe. It is in the third step, the interaction, where that they actually interact with you and you all work together to decipher, to decipher the context clues. The closure is where you assign a reading passage. You might say uh, you should read the Velt before class on Tuesday. And the students are expected to use the context clues to decipher any uh, words that they don't understand. And you might check it by having uh, a, a discussion of it. Have them keep a journal of new words and write their words and let the class know how did they decipher the meaning. Now, Today's lecture was based on a handout from Smeekin Education. And you will notice here that you can go, it has the four-step lesson architecture. On the second page, it shows the 
different purchases, uh, purposes and power. And notice I teach where you watch and listen. I do, you watch and listen. Uh, and then for the third one where they enter, where they actually um, interact, you do and they help. The handout also has a whole class mini lesson planner. You can download this by going to this link and I type it in the chat. You can copy it and then you can download this. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this lesson will help you and your students and make them into super people. Again, thank you. Okay, thank you. Every time a historic figure in the West passes away. It I have to get this out there. Uh, I wanted to put in the link so if you wanted to get that, um, the handout, I'll put it here and you will be able to find it there. This is from a Google uh, Docs, okay? So you can use this and then our super uh, PR guy will be uploading Mr. Ferris I don't know if he's here, if he is, I hope he will show his face on here so that you can see him. He is the person who is responsible for putting in the, uh, for posting to our social media. And uh, he will be posting this short video that I did. You're welcome to use it. And he will post the link there on our TESOL uh, Kuwait YouTube uh, channel. Okay, uh, Ms. Rick, do you want to let them know who next uh, in, what, October, who the speaker will be? Pardon? Uh, did you want to share who our speaker will be for the webinar in October? Yep, certainly. So um, our next webinar will be with uh, Ms. Julie Leonard. And uh, we're going to have a very interactive webinar with her. And the webinar is going to basically uh, talk about context versus topic in communicative uh, language teaching. So we will definitely be sharing all the details, the registration link, the date, the time um, on our social media platform. So please do feel free to join us. Um, and to follow us so you can get all the updates, all the information needed in order to be able to join our upcoming um, webinar for next month. Um, however, I, I know we've come to an end to our um, uh, webinar for today, and I know we promised you all um, that we will be sharing the um, link to the certificates online. So kindly find the uh, certificate link in our chat box and you will be able to download your certificate. Um, in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to join, please feel free to ask away. Um, and yes, Ms. Sharifa, there will be a link uh, to the uh, recording of the session. So if you follow us on our YouTube channel, um, you will definitely be able to see all of our previous webinars all our recordings are there, but we'll definitely have um, a post to remind you where you can find all our recordings and all the details to our previous recordings. Oh, and there was a question earlier that I didn't answer when it was talking, when I was talking about membership. And remember, it showed different levels of membership. No, all you need is the free one. There is no advantage for being any other kind. And I am, I am frugal. So I would not pick one that requires me to pay money. I, since I would get no extra benefit, you get all the things that Dr. Reem has been uh, describing today for free. So just click on the free one, okay? 
Okay, Dr. Reem, I just I had wanted to show that or to answer that. Okay. Of course, I've already answered it in the chat box, no worries. However, for those asking about the YouTube channel, it is there in the chat box as well. So just click on the link, it will directly take you to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe, you can follow us and get notifications about our latest videos, um, our latest recordings to webinars or just general lectures that we will be posting um, for our members and for our participants. And uh, I want to add, if there's something that you would like to see on uh, the social media, you might want to drop Mr. Ferris Ashamari a line. And he can be listed, I think his is PR chair at what? TSALKuwait.net. I think that is his. You could send him any of uh, your suggestions for what would be helpful for you on the social media. Yep, precisely. Or you can simply send a direct message to our Instagram account. And he is currently um, controlling all the content and everything being posted. So you can definitely, um, if you want to avoid emails, you can simply just send a direct message um, on Instagram and it will be delivered. Um, to that the would definitely be me. I, I use Instagram for most of my messaging. <laughs> all right, so the certificate link is there for you all on the uh, chat box. Please, please feel free to download it and just fill in the details. Um, and if you have any further questions, please let us know anytime, Sharifa. If um, you have no questions, I think we will be wrapping up for today. Miss Ann? I have nothing else. And thank you so much, Dr. Reem and Miss Fatma today for everything that you have done. Look forward to the upcoming ones. Thank right, you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you again. Bye.